What's up guys, it's Brent with Likens Motorsports. We are looking at, uh, so I've got one single overhead cam motor going and here's the second one. Uh, this is a, um, an FE camera. So I guess in, uh, in terms of FE engine builders, uh, what we like to see are the, are the rare things. I get plenty of tunnel ports and high risers don't get a lot of cameras. They're expensive. <laughs> They're really expensive. Um, you know, like valve covers, thousand bucks, and timing covers are seven or eight hundred dollars. And uh, even a pair of cams can run about eighteen hundred bucks. <clears throat> so they're expensive. They're not cheap, but they are uh, off the chain cool. And um, I did a video. Uh, several months back when these heads first came in and um i did also i have the intake manifold on the way uh robert pond just got a shipment of those in <clears throat> and i uh, went ahead and put my order in for uh for the intake manifold for for mr dennis um mr dennis is a very good customer of mine uh he's running let's see one two three this will be his fourth engine for me and uh, he's got a lot of cool toys. He's got uh, an early uh, Galaxy wagon with one of my 390s that runs down in the 12s. Uh, it's a stinking boat of a car, like weighs I don't know, 45, 4,600 pounds. And it picks the front tires off the ground uh, when he launches with a top loader. And it's got the full interior and everything in it. So very cool. Um, he's also got a Thunderbolt clone that I did a 427 high riser for. Um, he did a Fox body uh, bracket car for his son that I did a 363 small block Ford for. So um, I think the plan is to put this in the Galaxy wagon, which would just absolutely make it that much cooler. But um, we're just kind of trickling parts in. We got a Robert Pond cast iron block that's. Uh, in the queue to be machined. So um, this will be a four and three eighths by four and three eighths combination. So that'll be 527 cubic inches. Um, no worries about the rods getting close to the cam cause there is no cam down in the traditional spot. Um, we got some Molnar rods and as soon as I get the chambers measured for these heads, we can order pistons. So that's why I've been hustling to get these done. So these come very bare. Um, had to put the seats and guides in and do the valve job and blend the seats in and, and all of that. So I'm going to give you just a quick tour of the top side before um, we switch to the bottom side. So the cam rides in bearings. So it's got little tangs for, for the bearings. Bronze valve guides, obviously. Uh, 11 30 seconds stem. We're using manly valves, and uh, Jay Brown does a lot of cameras, and he did a, a head flow test of um, various valve shapes and manufacturers, and these were the highest flowing valves. I'll show those to you here in a second. And if I remember correctly, this head does somewhere around the 400 CFM mark. There's a shot of the intake port. I'll give you a better shot here in a minute, but these are all CNC ported and uh, the underside looks very, very good. Let me, uh, this is a chunk. I don't wanna try to mess with it with one hand. So let me uh, flip it over. I'll show you the exhaust port. There's the exhaust port. And I'll show you the, the business end. There's the underside of the intake ports. And the exhaust ports. So pretty good size chambers. These are about, uh, I think these are going to measure up about 118, 119 cc's. I've got to do that in a second. So you're going to be along for the ride because we've got to measure all this for pistons. Okay, let me show you the valves. 
All right, here's the intake valve. It's a 2350, 11 30 second stem, uh, bead lock groove. These weigh 147 grams, nail head style valve. Got a little bit of a dish in it. 147 grams, if I didn't say that already. Exhaust valve is a 1900 tulip style. Again, bead lock, 11 30 seconds. Got a dish in the face of it. 135 grams. All right, so here's the difference in spark plugs. I'm going to show you this. Um, a 3923, 3924 is what is recommended for these heads. But that dude is way down in there. I'm not really a fan. That's a three quarter inch reach. This is a one inch reach, so that, I think that's gonna be overkill. And the piston would need to be clearance because this just takes a, a big dome piston. So, I'm not really sure how to proceed with this. I think I'll probably end up, um, maybe try a different, couple of washers under this, maybe some indexing washers, and see if I can get that choked up in the chamber a little bit better as opposed to this one. Just not a very clear shot uh, for, for the flame travel, I don't think. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna CC both of these chambers just to see the difference in what the spark plug does my guess is going to be probably a couple of cc's um we're gonna be aiming for i don't know i'll have to look at the cams again probably between 10 10 and a half to one but um I'll check these two chambers, and the way you do that is you grease up your, your valves um, so that they seal really good. And then you grease up around your uh, chamber and put your plate down and fill it up. Now, uh, the valves will I'll show you this real quick. You can almost feel the valve. It's right at the edge of the chamber. So uh, on our plates that we have that go over the head, we usually machine a groove in there because a lot of the times you get cylinder heads where the valves stick down and there's nothing wrong with that, but you just have to allow for it um, when, when you pour a chamber. Here's a shot of the grease. You just coat the outside of the valve and just make sure you get a, a good seal there so that the fluid can't go through. All right, so 116.6 with the spark plug with a one inch reach. And I'm cleaning up 118.0 on the money. So the difference between these two spark plugs with this sticking way out of the hole is just 1.4 cc. So basically about a, a tenth of a, a point of a compression, pretty much uh, needle. All right, now I went back with my deburring tool and just made sure that um, all the burrs around the chambers are, are removed, that there, there's no sharp edge there. And uh, we'll put, I want, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check the other head just to make sure that everything is kosher and um, then we'll give them a good bath. 118.4 for this guy. All right, we're right set up again, and the next thing we need to do is we got all of our data to uh, send our piston order in. I just need to measure for uh, valve spring install height. So um, need to order the valve springs, retainers, seats, locks, the whole shoot and match, and I just need to do some, some measuring um need bead lock uh valve locks radius locks and uh, i'll go ahead and measure my guide so i can get the right valve seals and we'll just take a bunch of measurements all right we got 
I'm holding this with one hand so it's not perfect, but that should be a 530 guide for our valve seal. All right, we are at two inches on the money on the intake side. Got some manly uh, radius locks for 11 30 seconds. Stand, standard, so it's a standard height retainer, standard locks, no locator. So a locator will take 60 thousandths of this. So I should be at like 1940, 1950 with a locator. On the exhaust side, 1930. All right, so our camshaft lift with a 1.3 rocker. I'm sorry, 1.27 rocker, um, 716-723 gross lift. So now I can, I have my install heights. I know what I can manipulate. I can get some plus 50 locks. I can shim this side. I can do whatever I need to do to make these match. And then I just need to pick a valve spring. Um, that'll give me about eh, 250 seat, about 650 open. Um, the valves are... A little chunky for an FE, but we're also not moving lifters, we're not moving push rods, and uh, we can find a pretty lightweight uh, valve spring from, from Pack is probably who I'll get. So titanium retainers, just, you know, really nice parts. All right, guys, that'll get me started for this project. I, I can get my pistons, um, all the specs I need dialed in with those, um, the dome size, and everything else and i can also start ordering my valve spring package so um that's just a kind of a step in the engine builder direction of of putting a build together figuring out what you need and then making everything match what you need hope you guys are having a good week i'll have absolutely more on this um hopefully maybe next week when the parts come in i'll show you some head assembly and we can put these to bed until the block is is machined but um this is a step in the right direction. Hope you guys are having a good week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.